Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Shahada Abdul Rashid. Welcome to the Philadelphia Muslim Oral History Project. This series is a part of In the Path of Islam, a project brought to you by the Free Library of Philadelphia and funded by the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art. This series and project shares and uplifts the voices of Muslims indigenous to Philadelphia and the Delaware Valley. These personal accounts that you're about to hear are unique, probably not written down, and important to be passed on for future generations. Inshallah, God willing, you will enjoy these stories as told by the people who have experienced them. Thank you, and may you be blessed with goodness always. Uh, Fatima, Haji Fatima M. Ali, a member of the Jewels of Islam. In the year of 1960, I think 63, maybe 65, I started working with a group of women in the Nation of Islam. That was the religion at the present time. We had two different phrases of Islam. And at that particular time, it was called the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I was working with a group of women called the MGT, which means Muslim Girls Training Class. I guess I continued working with them in various areas, cooking, sewing, maintaining your home, grammar, just the basis of teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic was only the basis. Those were the classes that we had set up at that particular time. And I happened to be an instructor for one of them. Then I wound up getting a group of women as like a social life, which as I stated, they were called Muslim Girls Training. And I imagine in we did that for maybe 15 or 20 years before I met up with Haji Rafika uh, Abdul Rashi, who was told by someone else, I can't remember, about me and the group that I had in the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam was established in 1930 by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That was the basis. and. It stayed in existence for 45 years before it changed over in 1975 by the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was named Wallace D. Muhammad. But prior to that, I'm trying to remember the year I met Sister Rafika, who was looking for a group of women that she could work with. She had the resources that were needed to bring about a change, I imagine, for women in general. And I think it was 1970 or the early 80s. And she brought her program to me discussing what she had available. And she was just looking for the participant, a group of women that she could work with. So I met up with her with along with another sister by the name of Shahida Ali, we met with Sister Rafika, and after she discussed her program, and it's, it sounded at that particular time something that was needed because I didn't have the, the resources, but I had the members. It might have been in the 80s when I met her then, because we just celebrate the Jewels of Islam under her leadership of 30 years two years ago. It will be three years this June. What made you join uh, What made me join the religion of Islam? Mm-hmm. Well, at that particular time, I was 26 years of age. I was married and had one daughter, which I still have, thank God for that. My husband had heard about the Nation of Islam and 
brought it back to me and it was telling me about it at the particular at that particular time I wasn't interested in that because I was attending the Christian church I was attending the Baptist church at that particular time and so when he was trying to introduce the nation of Islam to me I had no entrance in it, and two, maybe about two years later, I told him one day that I was going to go to one of the meetings with him. And I think what really uh, encouraged me to become a part of it was the fact that how black people had been treated prior, before I was born. So I won't go all through that, through the slavery and all that. And I had an aunt who used to tell me how how uh, they were treated coming up, the family. She would tell me that it was mistreated so bad coming up, her her family, she remembered, it was eight of them, and they all lived in a barn down, I think it was some part of Georgia, Macon, Georgia, I think. And I guess reflecting back, hearing the different stories that my aunt would tell me about how they was raised and treated through the Caucasian race, how they, how they treated not just their family, but all families was just about treated the same, all black families. And going to, going to one of the lessons of the Nation of Islam and listening at them telling you, well, you know, about a better life, showing you a better life, under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was taught by Farai Muhammad at that particular time. It's a long story, so I so much to tell. Well, I think from the way that the black people was treated and listening to the lessons that Elijah Muhammad was teaching helped me to revert to Islam, really looking for a better way of life. I imagine that's what I would basically say, looking for a different type of life. Mm-hmm. And after joining up, it took me approximately two years to join because at that particular time, you had to write a letter in order to join and your letter have to be accepted. And I had wrote so many letters and I gave up about writing a letter trying to join. And then when I gave up, that's when I was told that my last letter I written was approved. And it took two years for me to get approved to be accepted in the nation of Islam. Islam has changed from from the time I joined. Like I said, I joined in 1958. And this is now 2022. So we're talking about 60 years or more different. Yes, there is a difference. The first part of it was strictly about caring for each other as you do for yourself, the love, and reaching out to different ones that might need help or comfort. Or you, 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 have, you sympathize more, I would say, during the first part of my growth. And it was, you know, very sincere love with one another. We felt for each other as we did for ourselves. So as Islam grew, it, it became so many different parts, so many different names, rather, because it grew very rapidly after, I would say, in 20... I mean, no, after 1975, it started growing real rapidly. Different groups calling themselves different names. But ba- basically, we all believe in Allah. That's the, that's the basic thing. We, be, we believe in Allah, who you will call God, but we call him by the name of Allah. Basically, that's, we all believe in that and him and that Farah Muhammad at that particular time had taught Elijah Muhammad the religion. And he, and Elijah Muhammad brought the religion to us, the black race. As I stated, 
the religion changed in 1975 after the uh, Elijah Muhammad had died. It was already predicted that his son, Wallace D. Muhammad, will, was going to resume the religion, but take it in a different phrase of understanding the religion of Islam. But a true, they call it the true Islam, which is that uh, basically we the Quran is what we are into. That's our holy book. All Muslims do you read the Quran, regardless of what sect they are in. We all read the same holy uh, holy book, which every religion has their own book. And we know that the Bible was used for the Christian. But the Muslims use the Holy Quran, and they also read the Bible. So uh, uh, that's a conflict that you hear about. But we don't condemn the Bible; we just don't study on it. We do read it. I worked in the school of Islam as a dean for three years, but I worked for the school as the, as a nurse, which I practiced from the University of Penn. I worked at the school for as a school nurse for approximately eight years. Uh, we had a school by the name of Sister Clara Muhammad. What you want your legacy to be? How do you? But want I'm known, legacy? Joe, as a person that cares for all people, regardless to your race, creed, or color. It doesn't matter who you are, as long as you're a human being. I have always been known to help, and that's what I still do. I do what I can. At 92, I help to uh, help with delivering food on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, I take bags because I'm still driving. I visit sick, but not as not as often now, being that we have this virus that really causes you to be reluctant and going in anyone home now, and you so you be cautioned that I, I don't take a germ or they don't give me a germ. So I don't do as much visiting as I used to do. I was well known for visiting the sick, like a missionary. Not only the sick, I, anybody in distress or any situation that people had and they need assistance, I try to help in any kind of way, Joe. And that's what I'm known for. And that's what I want people to know. It didn't matter to me who you was, where you came from, long as you was a human being and was decent. I even at, even sometime I ran up against some, I guess, victims that were you be a little reluctant, but I pray on it and it worked generally worked out fine. You know, God protect me and all everything I have made an attempt to do. So I'm still reaching out. People come to me, I don't have to go to them because I'm so well known for, for, for the work that I have done in the past. Even though I mentioned I'm 92, so I, my hearing is not as good. My vision is very good. My walking is not that well. But I do have a good mind, a heart, and my soul, I hope, is good. You have been a role model and a leader within your community for a lot of years for the work that you do? Oh, yes. Um, yes, I have been a leader and a role model for the last 50 years in my religion. And it is because of the work, the work that I display and it's the things that I do, my love and my caring for all.